All right, hello everybody, we're all good? We're all good? Yes. Do me one favour first, please put your phones on silent. The only communication we want is with our medium tonight. We don't be wanting no one phoning up for chicken chat, take out or anything like that. Not for us. <coughs> we would like to avoid that if possible. I avoid that because mine has the Ghostbusters theme and it's really funny when it goes <laughs> off, but it's not always appropriate. <laughs> I had that once in a talk with David Wells. <laughs> My mate had the magic round about. He oh. turned his phone off. No, I played through the service. It come back on and went off. Oh, it happens. It yeah. happens. We laughed. Yeah, I mean, they'll find their way of communicating, won't they? Oh, yeah. Right. Can we all give Paul a lovely, lovely warm welcome today? He has stepped Thank into you. the breach and helped me out once again. I don't know what's going on with all my mediums. I think as soon as they, as soon as they come here, they're just like, nope. <laughs> it's just there's something going on poor Emily she was I messaged her last week and she was like yes I'm so looking forward to coming to this new church it'd be great and then she messaged me Monday night wasn't it I'm sitting there at Circle and I've gone oh and they're like that's the face of despair and I'm like maybe it was just cancelled <laughs> and she's got a family emergency bless her not her fault it happens to the best of us um so yeah so all I'm going to do um I'm going to ask Paul if he'd just open it any way he wants to for us and then we will get on with all our other stuff could I ask you to join me in prayer, please? Divine Spirit, Father God, Spirit guides and helpers, I would ask that you join with us here this evening, that I may be allowed to work with you and for you, give evidence of love and life everlasting. I would ask that a cloak of protection be placed around each and every one of us here. And Father, I'd ask for healing, healing for all those mentioning healing books around the world, and also for all life that's in need of healing and either cannot or will not ask. And I ask this in truth, love, light and sincerity. Amen. Thank you. Awesome source. Right, you all know the drill by now. Here's my healing book. I'm going to read out this lovely little thing that I scribbled down about an hour ago. And then we're going to just just take a moment, just a moment of silence, just to kind of imagine everyone in it. In, I won't say a better place because everyone thinks they want to be over the other side then. I'm like, don't do that. <laughs> Not now. So just in a better situation than they are, just surrounded by love and light and healing and all sorts of good thoughts. And that's all we need. Great spirit, we gather in this space of love, light and acceptance to both receive and give healing, sending it where it is needed most. To all those who are in difficult situations, poor health, or just that need extra love, we send to you as well as those listed below. We've got Darren, Caledonia, Paul, Dougie, Vicky, Michael, Anita, Jenny, Maureen, Roy, David, John, <sighs> Caledonia, Darren, Scott, Katie, Craig, Sue, Sam, Laura, Janet, and Carol. <coughs> Lots of extra healing going to that lot because that's a bumper list. That's lovely. Thank you all so much. You'll have to excuse me for two seconds while I grab my water out this bag because I realised I'd left it there and not <coughs> grabbed it and that's just me being a weirdo. What are you doing now? Don't go system settings. You can bog off. Right. As in, <laughs> I'm a professional. Oh, Welcome. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I'm already boiling. Oh. Okay, so this, as you all know, I just like to read out a little uplifting story or just a little story that um, reminds us that we're not all alone in the world and sometimes it is a good place. And this is a little story that I picked up from someone who is an ER doctor. So they are American, but they're an ER doctor. And what I've we found a lot of doctors tend to think like, that's it, like this is it and everything else, nothing exists. Because they see a lot of nastiness in their lives, they see a lot of trauma and heartbreak and problems like that but very occasionally you get a story like this that makes them rethink that so this is his own words i am an er doctor and i have a story that seems unbelievable but it is a hundred percent true and still gives me chills to this day i got permission to share it from the family involved but i still haven't told many people until now as it seems quite fantastical 
Many years ago, I was working in the ER and I got a patient who was a victim of a drowning. Five-year-old girl had fallen into the family pond. When the paramedics brought her in, they were still doing CPR on her. She had no pulse, no blood pressure, she wasn't breathing and showed no other signs of life. We brought her back to the ER room and attempted to resuscitate her. I placed a breathing tube, etc. And fortunately, after 10 minutes of hard work, we got her pulse and blood pressure back. Her family arrived and of course her parents were extremely distraught. Her dad was taking it particularly hard. He was blaming himself and he was saying, I should have known better, it's all my fault. I attempted to reassure him. I was like, sir, listen, this is not your fault. Accidents happen all the time. It was a complete accident. But he wouldn't accept that. And he said, no, you don't understand. When I was a little kid, I went to stay with my grandparents. And they told me not to go down to the river that was right behind their house. But I thought they were just being silly and I thought I knew better. So I wandered down there anyway. And I got in the river, I got in trouble and I almost drowned. I started screaming for help. And my grandpa ran out of the house, dove in the water and saved my life, but he lost his that day. And the dad said, first I killed my grandpa, now I've almost killed my daughter. Again, I tried to reassure him. I was like, sir, it's just an accident. It's not your fault. Everything will be okay. The patient was admitted to paediatric ICU to be monitored. A few days later, I got word that the little girl had woken up in the ICU and that they had extubated her, which had taken out the breathing tube. So after my shift, I went up to visit her and the family. Obviously, the little girl wasn't talking too much because she was still recovering. So I was talking to the mum and dad. They're extremely thankful. They're very grateful. And obviously, they're overwhelmingly ecstatic that she's going to survive this awful ordeal. So I turned my attention to the little girl. And I'm just spe sparking up a natural conversation like, do you remember me, etc.? And she says, no. I said, do you remember the nurses? Do you remember the paramedics? No, no. Then out of nowhere, she says, I remember Sam. And I said, who's Sam? And she shrugs and says, I don't know. I said, OK, well, what was Sam doing? I'm thinking, you know, was he doing chest, compression, chest compressions? Was he someone in the ER? I don't know. And she says, he was holding my hand. And so I asked, what did he look like? She replied, he was wearing a hat and a funny jacket. I admit defeat. I don't know who she was talking about. Then the dad walks over. He's tapping on his phone and he pulls up a picture on Facebook. He turns the phone around to show her the screen and goes, was that Sam? She says, yeah, that's him, that's Sam. Uh, Dad turns to mum and said, oh my God, that's my grandpa. So his grandpa, who had died 25 years before, saving him from drowning, was holding her hand as we was doing resuscitations. And it still gives me goosebumps till this, this very day. So that's one I just wanted to pass on because it is one of those stories that is just so positive and uplifting and it certainly made that ER doctor completely reconsider all of his thoughts on passing over and things like that. I'm going to have to pass over to Paul now because I can feel spirits all around me at the moment and they're bugging me so I'm going to pass <laughs> over to you to go do your thing because I'm, I'm, I'm not doing it. <laughs> Good evening everybody. Good evening. And I just want to say it's nice to be asked to come here. Um, I do like to start off a little bit with a small address. One, because it helps me with my guys. And two, because I believe for those that don't get a message, you should at least go away with something to think about. The problem I have is I've given out so many blooming addresses, so I can think of which one. Um, right, a little bit about me, so I apologise now, but there you go. Um, when I was a kid, I didn't believe in much. In fact, like, I was told to go to Sunday school. Best part of that was sitting around listening to the stories as far as I was concerned. And as I got older, I started wanting to know a little bit more. And um, see a vicar, I used to go up and ask him questions. And I got told, you've got to have faith. You've got to believe. That's about it. I see a priest. You've got to have faith. You've got to, and that's all I was told. Everybody I see told me that. One day, my brother phoned me up and he said, you fancy coming to church? I said, be honest, I don't know what I'm doing Sunday. He said, it's not Sunday. It's Wednesday tonight. What church meets on a Wednesday? He said, it's a spiritualist church. What's that? 
come along and find out. So I went along. I ended up six weeks on the trot I went along. Six weeks on the trot I got a message. And it was the sixth week. There was a medium called Mike Matthews. And he's still going today. But he's giving me this message and he said, you're going to be up here one day. I said, I don't think so, mate. I said, I couldn't stand up in school and sort of read out in a book. I said, I ain't going up there. If they want you, they'll get you. Well, that I found to be true. But what I'm getting, the, the bit that I'm meaning to get to <clears throat> is I used to ask questions because that is the way, if they could make me believe, then fine. And the questions I used to ask was things like, if there's a God, why is there so much bad in this world? If there's a God, why do babies die? And it's questions like this, and I could not go with, Believe, have faith. Didn't do it for me. But after that last um, meeting with Mike Matthews, I went round and see him. I said, you mind if I ask you some questions? I said, yeah, sure. So I said to him, if there's a God, why is there so much bad in the world? And he said, because we need it. He said, if you haven't got the bad, how do you know how good you've got it? And if you haven't got the good, how do you know how bad things are? I thought, now that makes sense. Then I asked him, why babies die? And to me, this really got me, because to me, they're innocents. And I can't understand what they're going. He said, well, that... He said, it's a bit of a longish story, if you like. He said, but I'll try and cut it down for you. He said, the reason we are here on the earth plane is so that we can learn lessons that we can't learn over there. He said, the lessons that we're here to learn are those of our own making. When we come here, we're given freedom of thought. And this is so that we can make mistakes. And it isn't the mistakes that we learn by, it's how we sort them all out. Oh, well, yeah. He said, and when we sort them out, that's our lesson learned. He said, but sometimes in sorting things out, it involves other people. And sometimes people do pass before their time. And when they do, they haven't learned all their lessons. They have to come back. He said, reincarnation. He said, but when they come back, they come back, obviously, as a child. He said, now, to learn their last lessons, it could take them hours, days, weeks, months, years. Whatever. But as soon as they learn the lesson, then they go back. He said, that is why you find some go early. And that seemed to, uh, it was an acceptable explanation to me. And as I've gone through, I went through circle and, well, circle was great. I thought I was doing so well until I started up here. And there's nothing, nothing at all that compares with spirit teaching you. It's brilliant. I know I bored you all, so I'll shut up because that's the thing to do. Are we straight in the meat? We are. Okey cokey. Okey cokey. Oh, no. None of you have seen me before. <coughs> so, right. My name's Paul Charney. I'm a clear sentient. 
This means I feel, I sense. Whatever I get, I give you. I do not claim to be 100% right because all I'm doing is translating my feelings into words. If ever you've spoken to a doctor and you had a pain you couldn't describe, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, I do like to work with a bit of laughter. So I don't mean no disrespect to anybody. And if ever you want me to shut up, just say shut up. Um, <clears throat> got a couple of rules. And we all like rules, don't we? I like loud yes, no, and don't know. Is that clear? Yes. Brilliant. Right. Oh, yeah. do, do we like winning things? Yes. Brilliant. You'll love this. If I should see naughty dogs <laughs> or hear, okay, possibly, maybe, could be. All right, and the worst one is, um, I haven't met a medium that knows what um means, but um, any of these get said or done, you win a prize. You get to donate five pounds to the church's <laughs> charity. It's a good prize, believe me. When I first started out, I was getting. £15, £20 for the churches. Last time I went to one, I got £65. Beware, I'm getting better. <laughs> All right? I think we better get down. I'll see what you mean. Uh -huh. I'll see what you mean. Where am I going? Come on. I'll come to you, please, my dear, if I may. Is that all right? I don't know... I don't know why I'm coming to you at the moment. I do feel I've got a gentleman coming in with me. This gentleman, I feel, would be slightly taller than me by about an inch or so. Um, I do feel that whatever he went with was a tightness in his chest. I'm feeling it really tight. Um, this gentleman would have been quite close to you because I'm getting heat here, and this is what I'll get when they're giving me the love across. All right. Um, I want to say this man was, he was um, very well dressed. Uh, I don't feel much of a suit and tie, but whatever he wore, he always looked smart. I don't know. You don't know this yet? Okay. Where are we going then, mate? I would ask you to look around uncles, please. Um, the uncles, <coughs> I never said it was up, but I'm, I'm getting a tightness round his, round his chest. That's okay. But you'd understand him being a smart man, slightly taller than myself. I want to say dark hair as well. Okay. Okay. It's, I'll tell you all now, I don't like giving out names because as soon as I do that, everybody just goes with names and it's... <clears throat> you also understand that there's decisions that you need to make but you don't want to make at this moment in time, please. Um, I'm being told that you are quite a selfless person. You think more of others than what you do of yourself. Well, this is what I'm being told. Because I'm feeling there's a lot of caring around you, please. This uncle, I don't know whether they spoke or whether you could talk to someone about him, but we, what I'm getting, I feel like I want to dance. 
but it's like um, the old ballroom dancing thing. <laughs> All right. Okay. Would he have had a little bit of a belly on him? Not like mine, I'm talking small. It would have felt big then, wouldn't it? <laughs> It'd have been hanging over you. Okay. I've got a lot of paperwork around you as well, please. Could I ask you to hold on to it? Around you as well, asthma I'm getting. Would you understand? No, around you. I want to say that this asthma would have been with a gentleman. I want to say that the gentleman would be 35 to 40 years. Ain't a good start, isn't it? It's all right. <laughs> ah, no, 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 no. It's all right. Would you understand a collie dog? His name would be Stan. <laughs> I'm good, oh, aren't I? I'm getting better. <laughs> you don't feed the medium, you see. Look at the size of it. If this goes, they get flooded. <laughs> right, there's travel with you as well, please, but I feel this is more sort of... Um, October, November time. <laughs> There's also been an important birthday yeah. this year. You're very good with giving advice, but you're very bad at taking it, especially your own advice. You are sort of a um, two steps forward, two steps back person. Right, what I'm hearing is you talk so much sense, you do need to listen to yourself. Now, I know earlier on I was talking about children. Would you understand a child in spirit, please? And I want to say this would be around you, and I do feel this child would not have touched the earth plane. So this had been a miscarriage. Okay. Around you. You hear spirit. You do, you still do. But you choose to ignore. No. Well, look at me, I'm 35 and half. <laughs> I'm, right, I'm being told that you do hear spirit because you do talk to spirit because they're saying, I've heard a pray. And I'm not talking about getting on your hands and knees and giving it that. As I said in my address, if they want you, they'll call you. And no matter what you do, you'll find yourself getting pushed into that lane. All right? All right, give me some time. Take a March birthday, please. March. Birthday. <laughs> it have been your uncle. <laughs> Don't <laughs> feed the medium. <laughs> Right. There's a July birthday and there's an October birthday. Yeah. Please look both sides. All right. I've got a November for a passing anniversary, please. 
I usually get answers like that when I'm talking to the blokes where dates are concerned. And I've also got an August for a wedding anniversary. You know, having a little bit of problem with your sleep, please. I want to say there's healing being sent to you. And a bit of upliftment. It's just saying you've been, what you see here isn't what's going on in here. And I feel you've been down there a bit and they want to uplift you. All right. I'm going to say take the love and God bless. I want that to us. All right, isn't it? Lovely <laughs> job. I'll go outside, Dan. Pub. <laughs> Who's coming? Lady in the white, black and green stripes. Go come to you, please, my dear. Why are you doing that? <laughs> Do you know? Everyone forgets what they put on when they're Mom is... Everyone should have me. Now, the blokes here will understand this, right? If I'm going out, I'll go up, put a shirt on, trousers on, jacket, shoot up. My old missus, she'll try on half a dozen different dresses, blouses, and God knows what. She'll spend a half hour looking in the mirror. And we'll go out. And then somebody comment about their clothes and they go, Will you forget that quick? <laughs> right. <clears throat> right, I've got a lady here. She's about this tall, please. I do feel... This lady makes me feel she was very, very frail before she passed. All right? Um... I want to say around the nose and mouth, she looks quite a bit like you. She did need looking after before she passed. She did end up passing in hospital, please. You were right. I told you. <laughs> it's not you, it's them. Every time. Every single time. It's all right. I've got a lady. As I'm giving this, I've got a lady behind, and I've had her since I was sitting there. And she's nice. not wanting to go. But this lady, she's got like, without being rude, I want to say like a blue rinse. <laughs> but her hair went up and over like that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's one of our You'd understand that? Yeah. She had a little bit of weight on her. She would have been about so big, so tall. But I want to say she had, <laughs> she would have said it the way things are. Straight to the point. Just get away. No, go away. Yeah, well, I've acknowledged her so she can go do one now. <laughs> You wouldn't understand the name of Simon, would you? No. Am I with somebody else around you there? No? That's because he told me to stand next to you. You can take the Simon. No one else can take the Simon. <coughs> You can take Simon. Can you take the description of the lady, apart from looking like that lady, well, suppose it would be, can you take that sort of description as well, please? I'll take that as a don't know. You won't pay full attention to the description, would you? Because you think it was a Lady about so tall, she was quite proud before she died. She would have needed caring before she passed. And she would have passed in a hospital bed. She was quite thin. I'll be honest, the way she's presenting herself to me. 
a friend of mine looked when he passed with cancer. You'd understand that. Okay, well, just carry on listening because sometimes, like lives. Okay. You can take time. And that's a weird one. Would you understand owning a book that should have gone back to the library years ago? Right. <laughs> <laughs> also, I want to say around now is a time for giving flowers. And I want to say this, this is in memory of. Would you understand that, please? Would this be a, a lady, please, my dear? You're going to say Mal, but I'm feeling there's a lady about now as well. <coughs> She's either a nan or a great nan. She would have known you more than you her. Yeah. I've also got a dog that's about that big, and I want to say it's an Irons 57. Yeah. The right mix up, all right? Yeah. I want to say it was a little bit scatty. Yeah. But it gave so much love. Yeah. And it was very protective. Someone used to smoke a pipe. And I'm getting a smell of, I don't know if you know, smell of old oven. Okay. Right, with the pipe, I'm getting a gentleman about my height. I do feel he would have carried a little bit of weight. I don't think as much as me, but he would have carried a little bit. He would have been a bit of a potterer in the garden. All right. Um, he... He would never get the garden how he wanted it because he always changed his mind here and there. But he enjoyed being out there. He's saying he enjoyed the bird song. Because I feel he was also an early riser. Okay. You've been having trouble with your shoulder, please, my dear. And not you, but around you. Who's been getting the dizzy spells? Not bad, but the dizzy... Okay. Because I want to say there's healing being sent out there. I don't know if this is you or that lady there. Who's been having trouble with the back lately? And that's because when you bend, you keep straight legged and go down like that, isn't it? You've never worked in a pub, have you? You did. Because he's saying that you're a bit of a scatty and it was something to do with a bar and a steward. <laughs> Would you understand that? He said the times that you've been told. You understand? Okay. Decorating, please. But I feel like it's wanting to be done. You ain't doing it. 
Want in and waiting. Okay. That's good. Right. Give me a date. Give me a date. You take a December for a passing anniversary, please. January birthday. Yes. May birthday. Yes. And August birthday. Yes. I want to say June for a wedding anniversary as well, please. Yes. I'm getting frustration with you as well. It's a case of I want to do, I want to do, and I can't, and I'm getting. <coughs> Try a bit of meditation, my dear. All right. I say, take your love, and God bless you. Try over here now. Lady in yellow. She looked. She looked. She looked. She looked. <laughs> Whenever I stop, would all the ladies look like that so they know first? Is you all to work with you, my dear? you got a lot on your mind at the moment, please. As I've come to you, it's as though your head's gone. Mm. There's so much in there, but everything's spinning round. And I'm getting a similar sort of confusion with you at the moment. Um... Okay, so not knowing which way to turn. Too many options. This is a gentleman I have with me. Um, <laughs> right, it's got a bit of a sunroof. Yeah. Quite a deepish laugh. <clears throat> Makes me feel he was a very nice bloke to those that knew him. Those that didn't, they'd all feel a bit standoffish. Thank you. You're very much similar to him. Yeah. And he said, that's a good thing. Because he believed in teaching respect. And he said, you are the same. You're not happy in a job or something? I've, um, I've got a feeling that... Yeah. way he's making me feel is that I want to do the job, mm -hmm. but I'm not allowed to do it the way it's supposed to be done. And I am not happy with that. Playing a song, Sunny Side of the Street. Would you know the song? No. Just place your feet on the sunny side of the street. Don't go in the shade, get into the light. Alright? But you sense spirit around you. Definite. Because you feel. That's good. He says, you're not afraid. You're not afraid. Why is he placing you up here? Is there a confidence thing with you, please? You will overcome that. I want to say there's been tears around you recently, please. Oh, strong words said as well. Shouldn't use that language. <laughs> He's telling me he used to try and do it out of earshot. But usually it wasn't because he had a loud voice. But, yes. Take roll-up cigarettes as well, please.
I ain't talking funny fags. I'm going back in time to proper cigarettes. Yeah. <sighs> like a little flutter on the horses as well. I'm getting horses and dogs, greyhounds. But you weren't too bad at that. I don't feel it was a lot of money, but you no, just it a little, yeah. yeah. You take name of Ernie, please. Yeah. And I've also got an Albert. Yeah. There's also an Emery. Here they go. <laughs> and I've got an Elizabeth. Yeah. I want to say Lizzie with that. Yeah. And there's a Mary. Yeah. Stop it. <laughs> Is it your feet or your shoes that need sorting? Or is it both? <laughs> right. Would you understand like a tingling underneath the feet? Yeah. Mm. Both have glasses. I feel you wear them for reading, but you're supposed to wear them all the time. I know. <laughs> <sighs> Baby coming around you, please. Not with you, around you. <coughs> if you can't hold, get it, yeah. hold on to it, all right? Yeah. Do you want to know what sort of colour to knit? <laughs> Yellow, it goes with anything. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> April birthday, please. There's a May birthday. Cool, yeah. Blom, you've got a lot of birthdays. You can take virtually every month. September birthday. You take a June for a passing anniversary. Be honest, I feel this is more of a gentleman that would have passed. Um, not like his birthday was on the Okay. I want to say a September for a wedding anniversary. But I want to say that's an important one. I've got a lady that says Christmas was her time of year. Why'd I have to start you talking like that? It's far into the year. Leave it to December. Right, you got to save her a seat. Buy the tree, she says. All right. I'm going to say, take their love and God bless you. Boom, boom, boom. Lady in the white top with a black bit. That's the one. Oh no, I told to do it early. Oh, it's work with you. Who's been getting the headaches, please? And do you understand a lot of them you bring on yourself? So I'm getting a lot of stress with you. I'm getting problems across the shoulders and then the back of the neck. This your first fiver. <laughs> Ain't bad, any? I knew I'd get one. <laughs> she ain't got a fence. She's in my circle, so she knows not to feed anyone. So she's giving you absolutely nothing. That's why, in her defence, she is. Yeah, like, but I did say yeah, yes, no, or don't know. I will accept. <laughs> hey, <laughs> we have heard that before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You want to do so much, but I feel you don't want to take the next step. You need to take the next step. I'm being told, don't be afraid. 
I don't know who the we is, but I'm being told, we are with you. Don't be afraid. We'll walk it with you step by step. You will not be given more than what you can handle. Can you understand this, please? Are you a cat person? I've got about three or four cats wandering about. Oh, I had one month. Couldn't eat it all. <laughs> Would you understand? It's like a funny colour ginger and white. Well, I'll tell you to go away then. Oh, so you'd understand it. But you're going into a conversation. Yes, no, don't know. Teach, have a word. Right. <laughs> right, not with you, but around you at the moment. I feel like there's a lady suffering with a knee. I do feel a right knee. On this side? Yeah. Oh, it's my right knee. Oh, it is your right knee. <laughs> Oh, well, I've got that one wrong, didn't I? Well, part wrong. I've also got diabetes around you. Around. Would you also understand the name of Carol on the earth plane? My name is called Carol. So you'd understand it? Yeah. She will give you That's not the spirits here. My neighbour's school, Gary. Oh, yeah, oh no. Would you understand it? It don't matter. Want a bit of upliftment for the lady. Alright. Um have you been talking about doing healing? My mum's been talking to me. Oh, okay. So I'm getting healing around you. All right. <laughs> I've just been told you need a bit of a kick in the right region <coughs> to get you moving. You're very stubborn, but once you get moving, you do have a tendency to slide along. But it's getting you moving that's the problem. Problem with the door at home. There a door keeps banging, or do you keep hearing a banging door? You'd also understand the keys keep going missing. I've got a key ring with about three keys on it and I feel like it's there one minute and then over there the next and over there. That's a, mm, wasn't it? No, no, That's no, another no, fiver. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of things going house, but not these. Okay. Like kids or spirits though, who knows? Right, I'm not sure if this is a gentleman's name or a perfume. Would you understand Charlie? Would you understand it as a perfume? Yeah. Would you understand smelling that perfume when nobody else is there, just you? Thank you. You'd also understand a lady's ring. I'm not sure if it's gold or silver because it's very thin. I feel like it's been on a finger for a long time. Very worn, very thin. But as it comes round the front, it, um, oh, how do you describe it? 
If it is a car, I'll have no trouble. Being a ring. It sort of comes up a bit fancy, fluted around. But there's a single diamond in. I don't want to say it's a big diamond, but it's sufficient enough. Would you understand that? From somebody in spirit, please. Okay. Okay. And I've got to say, you'd also understand placing a red rose on the coffin. This is to come back with all the love that it was given, please. All right. And somebody done a eulogy at the funeral, please. Someone. Done a eulogy. Got up, said words. Yeah. Yeah. I want to say it made this lady cry. All right. And she said, I didn't realise just how blessed I was. There's a lot coming up for you to do. There's also a lot of opportunities. If you feel right, take them. If you don't try them, you don't know if you can do them or if you'd like them. All right? But try them. You take the name of M or Emily. Got a March birthday, please. February birthday. A December birthday. And a June birthday. I've got a January for a passing anniversary, please. They're saying yes, and I feel it's a female, all right? And I've got May for a wedding anniversary as well. Don't forget to look both sides, all right? Okay. I'm going to say take the love and their advice, and I'll say God bless you. <coughs> Gentleman right at the back there. Can I come to you, please, matey? Yes. That all right? <coughs> right. I've got to be honest. I heard you saying about your motor and the wheel outside. Right? I'm only saying this because there's a gentleman, I feel he'll be about this tall, but he's talking about the frustrations with you. But this isn't just about the van. You understand this? I feel like up here, things have been going on for about a month. You would understand it if I said things weren't going right. This is what happens when you go to a bloke. I've got a. Mm, mm. <laughs> so a lot of it with me. And I know this because I used one last time I looked. Is. They don't like the privates going out on, you know. <sighs> no, not that sort of private. You weren't in a command house, was you? No, there you go. <laughs> or the Black Watch. Um, I want to say this is to do with business more than your private life. Would you understand that, please? That's me started sweating there. Yeah. You're a little bit too soft. Um, okay. 
I'm being told you, where work's concerned, you're a little bit of a perfectionist. And when people come up and start, ah, oh, well, I want to on, you go, oh, all right, I'll do it, I'll do it. But not so much on the money side. Would you understand that? I'm being told that you're big hearted and you're letting money slip through your fingers. Well, no, you didn't. They did. <laughs> I'm getting so tense that I feel this is you a couple of weeks ago. So tensed up that I feel like I want to punch someone or something. How's again? He's got a cat down here. I'll swear it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Would you understand pipes and tubes? I'm just seeing put like tubes, pipes. Have you been taking your your upsets out on a piece of pipe or something? You've been having to bang it one with an hammer. You take name of David, please. Can you take David in spirit, please? Okay, okay. You better give me dates. October birthday, please. Hello. <laughs> I'll go out for Christmas. <laughs> you know, right. All that for a dunno. Right. I've got a March birthday, please. And a July birthday. I'm not giving man dates. I want to say October for a passing anniversary, please. And a June for a wedding anniversary, please. Good God. <laughs> <He's gone. laughs> oh, dear. Just waiting for the stage puff marshmallow man to come in there. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to say, take the love, matey. All right. Only a, I'm finding it a little bit hard to keep the link with you. That's to be honest with you. We noticed. We noticed. What you should do is when you come, you should have a pencil and a pad and write them down. Um, this is right, so they can just go back and listen to what was it they said there? Right. It, uh, it, it, oh, I, I, oh, you got trouble with that, haven't you? <laughs> okay. Lady in green, if I can come to you, please, me dear. Is that okay? I've got to tell you to stand up and be counted. But I do feel... You're not that type of woman that wouldn't stand up and be counted. Would you understand that? Would you understand market stalls? Do 
if it's not a market store, it'll be a boot sale sort of thing. No? Going to one on Sunday. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're going to one on Sunday. <laughs> Coming this part of the sound. Right. <coughs> Funny dreams, please. Right. You would understand a dream. This would be involved. I want to go back a few years. This would be involving a lady that was very close to you. With the dream, all you see was a head and a shoulders. Couldn't make much sense of who or what was around her. Would you understand that? Okay. Would you understand, and I'm not saying it's this lady's name, but somebody's shouting at Leslie. You can't take a Leslie, can you? Not with anybody around you, am I? Don't all shout out at once. <laughs> no, nah, I'm not. Right. What have we got now then? Would you take a connection with boats, please? I'll take that as a no. <laughs> well, no, it's, if it's not there, then it's not the connection. You can't take the name of Charlie, can you? About this tool. Slim gentleman. I want to say slim, broad across the shoulders. Yeah, Another five, huh? <laughs> Possibly we got. I want to say with this gentleman, he would have been a worker, not a shirker. All right. Um, He was one of, okay. This gentleman, it reminds me so much of my dad. I left school in the Easter holidays. And the day after we broke up, he said, what are you doing? I said, well, I don't know. So he said, well, what are you doing about a job? So I said, I'm on holiday. He said, no, you left school. Went upstairs, got a suit, said, put that on. He run me around every factory where I was. Made me go in and ask. And this is how I feel this gentleman would be. He didn't, he didn't mind putting his hand in his pocket if other people was doing their best. But if they didn't, it would be a case of, well, why should I bother with you? Right. Cake, there's a birthday coming up, please. Without being funny, there's more than two or three candles on this cake. Yeah. <laughs> Was this gentleman a bit of a joker? Because he said, I'm surprised the fire brigade allowed it. <laughs> <laughs> It must be about 35 candles on the cake then. Um, <laughs> a lot of to and fro in with you. Um, what am I getting? You still discussing about holidays, please? But you can never get a proper agreement. 
It's to ask you, it's well, yeah, if they say yeah to me, I'll agree, but if they say no, then I'll disagree with them. Yeah, not so sure, yeah. <laughs> 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 Ain't make me mind up. Okay. A white rabbit I've got. And this is going back years. And who's got a fear of frogs? Someone's got a fear of frogs. I ain't had that one before. Okay. <clears throat> There's a lot of sorting out to do at home, please. Um, I also feel there's a lot in a garden that needs to be taken and moved and yeah. somebody keeps saying they're going to burn it and never does <coughs> you anybody here? You'd also understand with this gentleman. Go with an heart attack, please. I'm getting a lot of pain here at the moment. But I feel we're one minute gone the next bump. <coughs> and this gentleman would have been really close. I'm not saying like a dad or something like that, but they would have been close. I've got to say, open your eyes and see the bigger picture. I don't know what they're talking about. I hope you do. <coughs> I don't know if something going on around you at the moment. He said, but the way you're looking at things, it's like driving a car. You sit there and you can see it all in front of you, can't you? And then you stop, get out the car and you see everything else. Another three quarters of it. You need to stop and see the bigger picture. And this is to do with something that's going on around you at the moment. All right. Take a December birthday, please. That's a good one, isn't it? No. I've got a late December for a birthday, and I've got an early December for a passing anniversary. I've got a September for a birthday and a June. For a birthday. I've also got August for a wedding anniversary. Would you also understand a gentleman's watch? It looks gold and it's like a brown strap leather. Okay. I'll say take the love. I say God bless you. Can anybody take the gold watch with a brown leather strap? Thank you. No one? Okay, I'll leave it at that then. I think I must be having my batteries run down. Oh. Right. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Close, right? <laughs> okay. Could I ask you to join me in prayer, please? Divine Spirit, Father God, Spirit guides and helpers, to say thank you for joining with us here this evening and allowing me to work with you and for you to give evidence of love and life everlasting. I would ask that the cloak of protection that's been placed around us all be left around us all, both here and on our journeys home. 
Also, I would ask that the doors of this sanctuary be kept forever open. And I ask this in truth, love, light and sincerity. Amen.